So um, my name is Veronika Scholz. I'm a postdoc in Roland Lill's lab at the University of Marburg, and I'm working on developing a minimal cell with an iron sulfur protein biogenesis system. This project is part of a bigger project that we have together with a group of Tobias Erb at the Max Planck Institute for Terrestrial Microbiology here in Marburg and with John's lab. So as you all know, CO2 fixation is a fundamental feature in life. It involves the conversion of CO2 into biomass. And 90% of CO2 fixation is done by the calvin benson basham cycle. That's one of the six existing natural CO2 fixation cycles. Um, just because this calvin benson basham cycle has evolved to be the most predominant cycle for CO2 fixation doesn't mean that it's actually the best way to fix um, CO2. In fact, um, there is actually an even better way um, now to fix CO2. So recently, the group of um, Tobi Erb at the Max Planck Institute developed an artificial pathway for fixing CO2. And this pathway is called the catch cycle, and it has been developed in vitro. And it's, they could show that this um, pathway impressively is up to five times more efficient than the in vivo rates of the um, CBB cycle. And um, how did they construct this cycle? So they um, um, rationally designed it from scratch um, to build this new to nature CO2 fixation cycle. And it is basically involved 17 enzymes from nine different organisms from all three um, kingdoms of life. And so you might now also have the idea of putting this cycle into a living cell. And this is basically what um, Tobi Apps Lab is working on, on implementing this um, CO2 fixation cycle in the, um, syn uh, in the synthetic cell. Um, so the obvious reasons are that the synthetic cell here has a very trim metabolism and um, there is less likely to be a chance of interference between the um, CO2 fixation cycle and the host metabolism. So this idea is pretty straightforward. There is only one issue, which is um, that the CO2 fixation cycle requires one enzyme to work. It's HBD um, or 4-hydroxybutyryl CoA dehydratase enzyme. And this enzyme requires a 4-iron for sulfur cluster in order to function. However, Mycoplasma mycoides has lost its iron sulfur protein biogenesis machinery. It's actually an exception um, that it has lost its iron pro um, sulfur protein biogenesis machinery since um, this um, synthetic biosynthetic pathway is dist distributed um, widely, widely um, among all organisms. And so what I'm working on is now to introduce an iron sulfur protein biogenesis um, machinery into the JCBI synthetic cell. And so what are actually iron sulfur um, cluster cofactors? So these are, as I just mentioned, very ubiquitous and fundamental to life. And they commonly exist as a either two iron to sulfur or as a four iron for sulfur cluster. Um, general functions that they fulfill as cofactors of proteins are electron transfer. And one example you can see here, which is complex one from the mitochondrial or from the bacterial respiratory chain, in which um, multiple iron sulfur clusters transfer electrons from NADH to ubiquinone. So here, um, the iron sulfur clusters act like an electrical wire, just without the copper. These iron sulfur co cluster cofactors are also involved in catalysis, regulation of gene expression, protein structural stabilization, and donation of sulfide. So they're quite important. Um, phylogenetically, four designated pathways have um, evolved to assemble iron sulfur clusters in vivo. The is, the SIA, the DIF, and the SOC pathway. And these four different pathways all rely on the same working principle. First, we have a de novo assembly of iron sulfur clusters, and then we have a targeting and insertion of the assembled cluster into a client protein. So this first step involves a cysteine desulfurase, which generates sulfide, which then gets taken up by this iron sulfur cluster scaffolding um, unit that together with electrons and iron um, fuses a two iron to sulfur cluster under the consumption of ATP. Then the cluster is transferred to a designated targeting protein, which inserts the cluster into a client protein, or it fuses two of those clusters into a four iron four cluster, a four sulfur cluster that then gets inserted. 
So um, how do we now know or find out which of these four um, pathways that have evolved to put into the JCVI minimal cell? In order to find this out, my colleague um, compared the genomes of multiple different mycoplasma species that you find here listed and looked for the presence of genes involved in iron sulfur protein biogenesis or the presence of um, iron sulfur um, protein. And as you can see here, these species here, they don't seem to have the genes for iron sulfur protein biogenesis, and neither do they have iron sulfur proteins encoded. And so this suggests that these species evolved away from an iron sulfur protein dependent, dependent lifestyle as their genome shrunk. When you look here at these um, species, they seem to have iron sulfur containing proteins and also they still seem to encode um, the operons for iron sulfur cluster um, biogenesis or assembly. So we took the operon from uh, mycoplasma penetrans and put it into the JCVI synthetic cell in SYN 1.0. And so now as the cysteine desulfurase, we have sub S sub U. As scaffolding unit, we have sub BCD. As a targeting protein, we have NFU. And what we're not quite sure about yet is what this electron donor unit would be. And um, if we need any chaperones to um, donate here the, the, the iron to the system. Co-expressed is also the 4-HBD enzyme that's involved in the catch cycle. And um, now we, we need to have a way to assess if actually iron sulfur clusters get um, assembled through this and still pathway. And so for this reason, we co-express aconitase from Bacillus subtilis, which serves here as a reporter enzyme as it uses a 4-iron for sulfur cluster in order to convert this aconitate into isocitrate. And we have a very straightforward enzymatic assay here to see if aconitase um, works. So just by measuring NADPH accumulation. And as you can see here, our positive control, which allows mitochondria, they show very nice um, aconitase activity, whereas our SYN cells here don't show any aconitase activity yet. So suggesting that our system or um, pathway doesn't work quite right yet. So another aspect that we are looking into currently is um, if iron gets actually taken up into the cell. Um, we're not quite sure if this already happens. Um, so for this reason, we co-express an iron 3 citrate ABC transporter complex from Bacillus subtilis. And another approach we're planning on doing is comparing two very closely related mycoplasma species um, that don't and do have a iron sulfur protein biogenesis system, and they only differ, differ in 65 genes. So it's quite likely that within these 65 added genes, there are genes that are involved in iron sulfur protein biogenesis or iron uptake. And so what are the greatest problems that we need to solve here in um, our collaborative project? Um, one is to get the um, protein expression going, especially when we look here at the catch cycle, because um, as I said, there is um, 17 enzymes from multiple different organisms from all um, kingdoms of life. And so getting those different enzymes expressed seems to be quite a challenge. And um, concerning the iron sulfur protein biogenesis pathway, it's challenging to find out all the different components that are essential to get the pathway functional. And so what could our um, work here contribute? So the, the goal would be to make a synthetic cell that can fix CO2 in vivo, that's the end uh, a goal. And for in terms of iron sulfur protein biogenesis, we hope that with our work, we can define the components that are required for a minimal iron sulfur protein biogenesis system in vivo. And with this, I'd like to um, thank you for your interest and uh, thanks to um, all collaborators. Um, thanks to my PI Roland and everyone involved here and special thanks to John for organizing this wonderful workshop. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Really nice, Veronica. I understand the project even better than I did before now. And I'm part of it. Hey, this is Valerie. I have a question. So did you rely on the NIF-S, NIF-U of the JCV of the 
of the mycoplasma equivalent because there are the two or did you put them like you must have if you put the whole cluster from your other mycoplasma you have two copies of the initial two steps yes mm -hmm. so we weren't quite sure if the nefes if you were if that's your question if nefes yeah. if you got uh, is expressed highly enough so for this mm -hmm. reason we took the um nefes if you also from um penetrance uh, in addition okay so do you know if the TNA modification, the thiolation is there? Because then you would know that nifes nifu is used for that. Yeah, it, it should be there. I agree. Um, if I go back to this table, yeah, we should have the, the thiolation here, which we can see by um, TRNA modification. We should have that, but we haven't. Yeah, but I was asking, yeah, I don't know if John, we had talked about doing that and maybe there was uh um I, I don't remember who you were a collaborator that would might be looking at TNA profiles mm -hmm. yep. modification Did that ever get done it never got done um yeah. it's it's something that you know i would like to get done but but we didn't the that grant proposal didn't get funded maybe maybe if you can get enough of cells, we could do a TNA extraction and have the analysis done by Pete de Don once, because we send him analysis all the time. We could sneak one in, but we need to get enough cells. But now as you guys could do that, I don't know. We can think about it. Valerie, I will, will correspond and figure out how many cells you really need. We can yeah. do this. Yeah. Veronica, have you thought about using um, Jörg Stalke should have interact. I think he has an interactome study done on mycoplasma pneumoniae. And so you might be able to find the genes you're looking for, you know, or, or at least candidates through the interactome study. I haven't looked, but that's a great suggestion. Yeah. I'll look there. I don't remember if there's any other iron requiring process in the minimal cell. I, I remember I looked, but I don't remember what I what I found. I don't think there is. I I need to um I need to try to I would like to get a met a metalome study done for the minimal cell. And mm -hmm. I forget the guy's name at Northwestern University who had said he might be able yeah, to yeah, do that for me. Yeah. Okay. We didn't find, uh, here's Roland, we didn't find any iron requirement. Uh, so this uh, mycoplasma mycoides and a few others are as unusual as Borrelia burgdorferi. This is okay, another, yeah. another yeah. bug which uh, apparently doesn't use iron. That's cool. It's cool, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and we can grow the organism in a defined media that shouldn't have any iron, although it does, it does use purified uh, bovine serum albumin. So you might be. But to not have iron, you have to be a maniac. To not have iron, you have to to really clean your glass. Like you have iron contamination yeah, yeah, in glass. Sure. So if, mm -hmm. if you want to get rid of iron, you have to make an effort. Well, okay. we haven't we haven't gone that far. We, we don't have to get rid of iron, uh, I mean, unless you want to really prove that uh, your cell doesn't need it. Uh, but for our our system, uh, it's it's not, not necessary. Uh, I, I know what you mean. And I think lactobacilla were also 20 years ago thought to have no iron requirement, but they, they do have iron sulfur proteins, they do have the subsystem. So if you ask microbiologists, they may still tell you lactobacilla do not need iron, <laughs> which is not true anymore. Anyone else? Veronica, this was terrific and we had a good discussion. If any of you have thoughts about this, please put them in the chat. I will capture this and this will be available.